Good evening, everyone. It's good to see you all. And we're going to have a minute's silence. So can I ask you all to stand, please? Today, as we should every day, we remember those who volunteered, sacrificed, served, fought, and died for our freedom. We thank you and we salute you as we salute those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedom. We will never forget we will remember you. Thank you, you may be seated. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are our God. We thank you, Lord, for all you do for every one of us. And we thank you, Lord, most of all, for sending Jesus, the Savior of each one of us. And Father, we pray that in this service this evening, that your blessing will pour out upon each and every one of us, including those online. Father, we pray <coughs> that you will bless every single person. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Our band are going to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Over to you. Thank you. If you wish, please stand and sing what a beautiful name. Thank you.
courage, Lord, that we can call you our King and that we can also call you our friend. And Lord, as that, that song said, nothing compares to you. Nothing in this world, Lord, nothing on this earth compares to knowing you and having a relationship with you, knowing that you are always with us and always for mm. us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.
years ago when we first started singing that song, it was a long time ago, I can remember Rob's mum, Margaret Silman, saying to me that every time we played that song, she couldn't do anything but stand in the presence of Jesus to thank him for everything that he had done for her. And I know all of us in this place tonight have got a testimony of what Jesus has done for us from little small things to massive things that he's done for us throughout our lives, and especially over the COVID period. But before that, I, I became a Christian when I was 17, and I'm 49 now. And the Lord has been with me every single day, through every situation, and I know that many of us have gone through horrible things in our lives and difficult things, but we know that Jesus has always, always been with us, and he always pulls us through it. So I'd like us to sing that song again if we could. And as we sing it, and it says, I stand, I stand in all of you. Just remind yourself what our great, amazing, mighty, powerful Lord Jesus has done for us. He came out of heaven, he came to this earth, and they tortured him before he went to the cross. And he died for us. And we know that we've always got him there with us every step of the way. And those that know him and love him, we know that we will see him face to face one day. Thank you. That's all is our online prayer and share that's on zoom thursday at 6 45 for seven the online growth group again via zoom sunday 11 o'clock destiny church online morning service with pastor andrew owen that's on destinies it's on youtube and it's on their facebook and our Facebook. Next Sunday at 6 o'clock is our evening service. Future events, Saturday the 27th of November, 3.30 p.m. is a special tea and testimony event. And we really would 
I'd like to encourage every single person that's been a member or has attended here in the past to come and join us at a tea and testimony event. One other notice, Operation Christmas Child, better known as the shoe boxes. If you wish to be a part of this this year, it's not too late. You can do it online. And if you do it online, they, it'll be just a, a money payment that you make, but they'll give you the choice of different items to go into the shoe boxes. This will be the last week we will have an opportunity for this year. Prayer, Robert, please. Please pray for Stephen Carey, for Robin Carr, and for Gareth and Sue. Sorry to trouble you, Gary. Can we add Kirsty Bolster that she's been in slow labour now for the past four days? She's been in the Merford Hospital twice, but they've sent her back home, so she's really, really feeling the pressure now. And I'd be glad to see the baby walk on the chair of her mother be going on to her, so she's not having a very good time with it at the moment. It's Hi. Kirsty Groves. Kirsty Groves. Groves. Yeah, please, Gary. If we can add Kirsty to our prayers. Would someone like to pray for these people? Do you want another one? Please pray for my daddy, he's having an operation on Wednesday. Darren's having an operation Darren, on yeah. Wednesday. Right, we yeah. will indeed. Charlie? Lewis, we all know Lewis. He's got COVID and he's not yeah. very well. Is there anyone that would like to come forward and pray for some of these or all of these? Okay, we're doing the word anyway, like, so. <coughs> Yes? Yeah. Good evening. I'd like to go into a time of prayer before I give you the word. Obviously, how God knows every single one of those people on that board there, and he knows their circumstances. We pray for Gary and Steve and Kerry at this time, Lord. It's good to see Rob and Kath back with us this evening. We carry on praying for yourselves. Obviously, this young girl up in Brian now, we pray that God delivers the baby and that everything will be okay there. So thank you, Lord, for putting your hands on each and every one of them. We pray for Molly's dad, Lord, and hope that everything goes well for Darren, Father. We pray for people that can't be with us tonight, Lord, but are all online this evening, Lord. Mm -hmm. Pray for each and every single one of them as well, Lord, and hope that they get something out at tonight's meeting. We ask all this in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. The reading tonight is Romans 1, verses 18 to the end. God's wrath against mankind. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godliness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness, since what may be known about God is planned to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that man are without excuse. For always they know God. They neither glorify him as God or never gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened, Although they claim to be wise, they become fools and exchange the glory of the immortal God for image made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over in the sinful desires of their hearts to sexual impurity for the discarding of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator, who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to the shameful lust 
Every, even their women exchange natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way of the men who also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for the other men committed indecent acts with other men and received into themselves the due penalty for their provisions. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to the deprived mind to do what ought not to be done. They have been filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed and depravity, and are full of envy, murder, strife, dissent and malice. They are gossips, slanders, God's haters, insolent, arrogant and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are sinful, faithlessness, artless and ruthless. Although they know God's righteous degree that those who do such things deserve death, they are not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. May God add his word to this reading. Amen. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Gary. God bless. Well, Wayne is going to come shortly to speak on that passage. So shall we just pray for Wayne? Heavenly Father, we lift up Wayne to you right now. Father, we pray that you will bless him will be upon him. We pray that your Holy Spirit will use him to share the word that you have given him with us. Lord, we want to hear what you have to say to us. And we pray that you will give Wayne the strength to deliver the message. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wayne. Well, good evening, everyone. It's good to see so many in church this evening. And there's quite a number of people online, both locally and internationally. Amen. So that's great to be able to join with you this evening as we share God's word, as we worship together, and as we enjoy his presence. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? That's something that we've missed uh, over the last year, enjoying the presence of God with his people but it's good that we're having people come back and that's uh, fantastic well we're almost done with this mega series that i've been talking about i've been talking about the church that jesus had in mind and we're on part seven and next time will be the final part and so <clears throat> we've learnt uh, about the church that the church is obviously people uh, who have given their hearts to God through Jesus Christ and I mm. trust that everyone in this church has done that mm. if not there's an opportunity this evening again online if people haven't found Jesus yet they can tonight mm. and so we praise him for that opportunity <coughs> that each one each of us has so we've learnt uh, over the last few sessions about uh, various types of church. First one we looked at was evangelizing church, then a learning church, and uh, we also looked at the loving church last time. And so tonight we're going to discuss the other part of that acronym, WELL, W-E-L-L, -L, and it's the first letter. So I haven't done it in order, but it's the first letter, W, and we're going to look at the worshipping church. Surely we need to be a worshipping church because we have a great saviour, a great Lord, and uh, we just thank him for his presence this evening. Can I ask you a question? Have you met anyone famous? Well, I'm sure you have. But let me tell you a story about a lady who entered an ice cream store in a town that Paul Newman 
how many of us remember the film uh, guy Paul Newman? Well, he was in town. He was doing a movie and he happened to be in the same ice cream shop as this lady was. And uh, she was a huge Paul Newman fan, this lady. And uh, of course it was his blue eyes that uh, attracted her to him. And uh, of course, not only his eyes, her knees used to buckle when she used to see him on television. But here he was in the same shop as her. And uh, it was quite amazing. And she ordered her ice cream and she paid for the ice cream and then she left the ice cream shop as her heart was pounding with excitement. I've met Paul Newman in the ice cream shop. And when she got outside, she realized that she didn't have her ice cream cone with her. So she started back to go into the store. And as she was going back into the store, Paul Newman was coming out. She almost bumped into him. And he looked at her, and with his wonderful blue eyes, he asked, are you looking for your ice cream cone? And she said, <sighs> she was unable to speak. But she nodded, yes, I'm looking for my ice cream cone. And then he replied, well, actually, you put it in your purse with your change. That's what she'd done. She was so overawed by his presence. How many people would literally put an ice cream cone into a handbag? Crazy. But we do crazy things. Why is it that when people meet someone face, famous, it makes their heart and their pulse race and act kind of strange and do strange things. Well, I want you to think about the next question because we all need to answer this question. When was the last time the presence of God quickened your pulse? Because as Christians, that's what should be happening. When we feel God's presence in our church and we feel that awesomeness of his presence, the atmosphere feels as if it's charged with love and uh, with amazing uh, feelings that one has. Well, when we're in the presence of God, the Father, it really does need to take our breath away. That's what should be happening in our church. And that's exactly what the type of church that Jesus wanted us to experience. And I trust as we continue enjoying God's presence, as we worship with the band leading us, that we feel that presence of God coming in. I've prayed a prayer every time I've made this sermon series, and I've prayed again. We ask God, the Father, open our eyes so we can see your truth. Open our ears so that we can hear your voice. Open our minds so we can understand your word and open our hearts so we may receive all that you would have us receive. Amen. So as we get going in this particular passage, I need you to understand that worship is something that we were all created to do. We were made creatures of worship. We either worship God or we worship other things around us. Materialism, the way we live, our lifestyles, that can be a worship in itself. But God made us to worship him, our creator. We have that innate desire within us to worship. And yes, it may be God or it may be an object, or a person, maybe a team, or whatever. But people do worship. We all do. 
And God made us like this, that we would worship him and only him. That's what, how he made us. And all the other items that people worship, they all fail us. They all fail, they all die, they all rot. But I thank God, he doesn't, he doesn't fail, he doesn't die, he doesn't rot. No, God is a constant person in our lives. He was here before the universe and he will be here long after the world as we know it is gone. So worship, there are many definitions of worship, I'll just mention one or two. Worship has been defined as the expression of love and devotion <clears throat> to God. Through participation in divine rites and services and through personal prayer. Another definition is it's the reverent love and devotion accorded a deity, an idol or a sacred object. Do you know worshipping God is not a difficult thing to do. Many today like to make worship complicated. But it's not complicated. Let me just give you an illustration of how easy it is to worship God. Now, have you ever eaten in a restaurant that is a little bit posh? The kind of restaurant that you need to dress up for. And at that kind of restaurant, you're all dressed up. In front of you, you have fine china plates, crystal glasses, three forks, remembering which one do you use first, cloth napkins, it's quite a posh place. And you have to be very careful at these restaurants, not to spill anything or do anything that might embarrass yourself. You don't want to look as if you're common, but you like to go to those places because it's something special and you want to be known that you're in a special restaurant because you feel special yourself. Well, eating at a, an expensive restaurant, you know, it can be very uncomfortable. You're on tenterhooks, you know. I mustn't tip anything, you know. I mustn't tip my glass must use the right fork and the knife in the right order. So people are watching. Got to be careful. Now compare eating at that expensive restaurant and eating at home. Now that's a totally different thing, isn't it? Eating at home. There you can dress in your comfortable clothes. Maybe people are watching this evening in their pyjamas, for all you know. That is what home is all about. You can be yourself. And there, in that particular home, you dress comfortably. You only need to have one fork. Forget about the other two. One fork will do. You don't have to worry about dropping anything on the floor or doing something that could embarrass yourself. Eating at home is so comfortable. Now, God's design for worship is like eating a meal at home. Not something that is uncomfortable with a bunch of things you have to do. God designed worship to be a time to come together in a comfortable setting. Seating themselves with our Father. Do you know God is here this evening. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, God is here because he wants to be with his people and he wants us to feel comfortable in his presence. That's a wonderful place to be. So how do we get to these sort of times and places? Well, there are many ways for us to really truly worship. God the Father. One way is through music. We heard the band playing tonight. It's wonderful that we got music. 
There are so many scriptures in the word of God that encourages us to worship him in song. I've got a whole lot list of them, but we haven't got time to go through. But let me just pick out this one. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to press, to, sorry, to praise him. Praise the Lord with a harp. Make music to him on the ten-stringed lyre. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully and shout for joy. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. And the psalmist also says in another psalm, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with <coughs> thanksgiving. And you know, even Apostle Paul, he said these words, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him, as found in Colossians. You see, worshipping God in such a way is unique to the Christian faith. There's no other religious group who worships the leader the way that we as Christians do. Some may chant, some may recite prayers, but there's no other religion will sing and sometimes clap and express adoration and praise the way the church of Jesus does. We have something unique in that. And while we're on the topic of music in the church, let me address the complaint department. Because it's surprising how many people complain. Oh, too many choruses. Not enough hymns. You know? Well, within the church, across the world, there are a variety of thoughts about music. Some say, as I said, we have too many choruses. Some say we sing too many hymns. Some like the organ. Some like the guitar. And so forth. The fact of the matter is that there is a lot of good music that has been written that we can use to worship our God. I love new songs. I love hearing new worship songs because it takes it to a different level, isn't it? We sang quite a few oldish songs this evening and it's great that we sing those songs too because it brings back memories as Lisa was sharing. brings back memories. It reminds us of God and what he's done with us. And so, yes, Music is important. Now, I don't know if you remember, in 1972, a Christian artist by the name of Larry Norman. God, oh, what a character he was. Larry Norman. He wrote a song, and that song was entitled, Why Should the Devil Have All the Good Music? And that's very true. Why should the devil have all the good music? Have you read some of the titles of music in the world? I'm just going to read a few titles from the country music scene. And you'll probably have a good laugh. Because some of the titles are incredible, aren't they? I'm going to pick number 10. You picked a fine time to leave me, Lucy. Wow. <coughs> Another one, her teeth were stained, but her heart was pure. <laughs> I'm so miserable without you, it's like having you here. <laughs> How crazy. 
You ain't much fun since I quit drinking. That's another title. And then I would kiss you through a screen door, but I'd strain our love. Well, this is quite a title. I went back to my fourth wife for a third time and gave her a second chance to make a first class fool out of me. That's the title of a song. And I like this one. Mama, get the hammer. There's a fly on Papa's head. <laughs> and I don't know what they were thinking here. You're the reason our kids are ugly. <laughs> Why should the devil have all the good music? Let me explain slight difference between hymns and a praise chorus. And I'm going to describe it by a story of a farmer. An old farmer, he went to the city one weekend and he attended a big city church. He came home and his wife asked him, how was it? And he said, well, it was okay, he replied. They did do something different in church though. They sang these praise choruses instead of singing hymns. A praise chorus, what is that? asked the wife. He answered, well, they're sort of hymns, but different. Well, what's the difference? she asked. The farmer replied, well, it's like this. If I were to say to you, Martha, the cows are in the corn, well, that would be a hymn. On the other hand, if I would say to you, Martha, 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 or Martha, 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 the cows, the big cows, the big brown cows, and the black cows, and the white cows, and the black and white cows, the cows, the cows, the cows, or the cows, oh, the cows are in the corn, in the corn, in the corn, oh, it's true, yes, it's true. The whole awesome herd is in the awesome corn. Yes, it's true. The whole awesome herd is in the awesome corn. The corn, the corn. Now, my dear, that would be a chorus. <laughs> I think you understand what that's all about. The point is, the style of music isn't as important as who we are singing the music to. We can have all sorts of music, but we've got to concentrate our worship on him. Thank God that the music we sing and we listen to and we worship God, with they have such a positive and uplifting message. Let me read another psalm to you. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. Folks, we have something to sing about. Amen. Our God reigns, hallelujah. And that's why our worship should be uplifting and we should experience it. God sent Jesus to the world to save us. He sent Jesus to die on that cross and to pay the price for our sins. And that is what happened. But three days after he died, hallelujah, Jesus rose again. Hallelujah. And he now lives within our hearts. We have something to sing about and to shout about. Now, I know I've spent a little bit of time there on worship because I think it's important for us to understand that we need to up our lifting up of our music and our worship. We're not just singing because the band is here. We're singing because God is here. Amen. And that's what makes the difference, isn't it? God being in our presence. Well, if we're going to be a worshipping church, then we need to have the mindset that worship isn't just part of your life. Worship is everything 
you do on this life. It should be centred on him and him alone. Now, I don't know if you've read Rick Warren's book, wonderful book, The Purpose Driven Life. It's worth a good read. He shows 10 ways we can worship without music. 10 ways. Number one, you can worship through prayer. We need to have a prayer life. God wants to be a part of our lives. He wants us to know him. And he wants to get to know us. That's the wonderful thing. He wants to get to know us. Each one of us. And when we're worshipping through our prayer life, we're focusing our attention on who God is. Number two, we can worship by reading his Bible. The Bible. How can we worship in spirit and in truth if we don't know the truth? That's what we're going to do. The truth is essential to our worship. Number three, you can worship God by being obedient to God. The word of God in James says, submit yourselves then to God. Number four, you can worship by giving your tithes and offerings. There's a bucket at the back there on your way out. You can worship by dropping money in that box. Amen. If you want to know what our worship is all about, what each one of us are like, then the best thing to do is to look at your bank account statement. What is your desires? What do you really worship in your life? Your bank account statement will tell you a lot. Scripture teaches us where your treasure is, there your heart is will be also. Number five, you can worship by building deep relationships with other Christians. Isn't it wonderful to be together this evening? And online, you're part of us as well. Yeah. It's wonderful. And we learn from each other those deep relationships. Number six, you can worship by sharing your faith, telling others about the Lord. Amazing. Number seven, you can worship God by serving others. Jesus taught us that when we do things for others, we're doing it for him. That's amazing. Number eight, you can worship God by being thankful. You see, sometimes we look at life and we see the glass half empty. We need to see it half full. We need to do that. Number nine, you can worship God by surrendering your whole life to him. Whether you realize it or not, many of us have parts of our lives, if we're honest before God, that are not completely turned over to him. And so we can worship in that respect. And number ten, you can worship God by lifting Sorry, living a life of purpose. In other words, everything you do, you're doing it for him. Each of us were created for God's pleasure. And so everything we do, we are doing it for him. And according to Rick Warren, God has a reason for our existence. <clears throat> Fivefold, fellowship, discipleship, ministry, evangelism and worship worship is the foundation of the first four if we ain't got worship we got nothing because if our attention isn't on god through our worship then anything else we do will not be anything so if we as a church can be a worshiping church the way jesus intended the church to be then we will be a powerful church. The way Jesus wants us to worship is to understand that worship isn't simply just one little pocket of our life, but it's all our life. We should be worshippers all the time. And here's the great part about being a worshipping church. When we honour God, 
with every part of our life and being we are supposed to be then God is going to draw near to us he wants fellowship with us he wants that closeness The word of God again in James says, Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Amazing. So if we want God to show up in our lives, then we need to worship him more. If we want to worship him more, we must submit ourselves to him more. The person who submits themselves to the Lord will be exalted in ways they could never accomplish on their own. So that relationship with God is so important. The church on earth needs to be a worshipping because worship is the activity of heaven. If we ain't got it sorted down here, how are we going to cope up there? It's going to be 24 hour in our terms God is haven't got a timetable but if we can think how am I going to cope for 24 hours of prayer we need to worship more down here to get ready for that time do you remember Isaiah when he witnessed the worship in heaven it allowed him to understand his own wrongdoing. Woe is me, Isaiah said. He felt terrible about his sin. And when we fail to worship, the sinfulness in us grows so we can actually keep our sinfulness at bay if we truly, continually worship him. And in the first chapter of Romans, the passage that Jason read. Paul shows us there what happens when the human heart turns away from a worshiping from worshiping God. If we turn our hearts away, all those things that Jason mentioned, it's not very nice what happens. I won't go through the passage again. But God has made himself evident to all mankind throughout all time. He has done this internally and externally. He has done this throughout creation, showing his existence, showing his power and his divine nature. As you look across this world today, no one can tell me that God isn't alive. This world is held by God at the moment. And people need to realize that. And yet we find today a church which is willing to suppress the truth of God. And the result of this is that they fail to glorify God as God and fail to give thanks to him. We've got to start making sure that our relationship with him is true and each day that we have hearts of worship you know i love that song when the music fades you know it's all about jesus it's nothing of ourselves it's all about him the major problem with the church today is of our worship for our god and our only hope to be a great nation again, a great world again, is when we truly find that place again in our church, that we are a worshipping people. The word of God is clear. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people so let us worship God and pray for God's grace and his mercy 
that he may grant true revival amongst his people for Christians and us in church on the rise to boldly proclaim the gospel so that the lost in our communities can be found. That's what it's all about, folks. The church that Jesus intended us to be is a worshipping church. And you may be listening to this service inside this church. You may be listening online. Maybe that you're not part of a church. May be that you're not part of a worshipping church. It may be that you haven't asked Jesus to come into your life, to be your Lord and Saviour. Many of us have, and we highly recommend that. Well, today, as I said right in the beginning, can be your opportunity to ask him into your life. Whoever is listening to this program, whether it's now or later, I'd like you to join with me in a prayer. It's a simple prayer. And the words are very simple. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Saviour. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. Amen. Amen. I just pray that if you prayed that prayer, whether in the service here or at home, if you've prayed that prayer, that is a wonderful decision that you've made. Truly now you can truly worship your God. We'd like to help you and at the end of this particular uh, broadcast, which will be broadcast again later this evening, there will be a connection, details, and if you want to, want us to pray with you, if you want to know more about the Christian life, we'd love to be able to send you this little booklet. It's called, This Is For You. And it just explains what you've done in that prayer. And I pray to God that what you've done this evening is real to you. And I'm looking forward to hearing you truly worship you are God. For his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Wayne. I'm sure that we've we've heard quite a lot about the church that Jesus wants. I trust that we we'll think long and hard about it in Jesus' name. The band are going to finish with, with our final song. We stand and sing, Great is the Lord. <laughs> Yeah.
spoken clearly to us this evening and Father we pray that as we go our separate ways we'll be praising you for speaking with us and Lord we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name Amen, Amen. Amen.